Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do this drawing of an oryx antelope with a black and white colored pencil on toned paper. Uh, first I'm going to do the sketch and the paper is sand colored toned paper. It's a Fabriano cotton paper. The pencils I'm going to be using are Kohino Gioconda black pencils. They come in three grades, but they're more or less the same. They're very similar. And the white pencil is going to be Faber-Castell, because that's the only one I had lying around. So this drawing is going to be a vignette. I'm not going to do the entire background. I'm just going to do a part of the background and fade the edges. The antelope here is drinking water, so the scene takes place on a water hole. So we're going to have a little bit of the background, just enough to give my animal some contest, uh, context and to, to show some of those lovely shadows, both on the animal and on the ground. So here now that I've done the main part of the sketch, I also need to do a little bit of sketching here in the lower part of the paper where the reflection will be. And the reflection doesn't have to be perfect, neither in terms of shape nor in terms of value. It just has to be kind of similar to the image above the water. So now I'm going to start working with a white colored pencil first. I initially tried working with one of the Stadler white colored pencils but I didn't really like the amount of contrast that I was getting so I picked up a Faber-Castell a white colored pencil or, or whatever is left of it because I should probably buy a new one and that's, that's what I'm going to be working with but this one worked pretty well because this white is a little bit uh, brighter, a little bit stronger. So I wanted a bit more contrast. So I'm going to uh, color in some of those lighter areas. Uh, not all of them, but at least some of them to get things going. Uh, one of the things that I've always found to be uh, very helpful when I'm working on a complex subject is uh, when you find yourself uh, kind of hesitating what you should do next it's always helpful to put in the lightest lights and the darkest darks or at least some of them and that kind of helps me navigate further and decide how much value I need in other other areas so here I started with the tail for no particular reason other than the fact that it's a dark area and that it's on the left and because I'm right-handed I normally work from left to right. So I'm going to uh, put in some of these darker areas and go over some of the lines of my sketch just to make that a little bit darker. Then I'm going to put in some of the shadow areas on the body and then I'm going to be shading the larger part of the body. These uh, large, long horns are very interesting. It's a fascinating looking animal. And uh, I, I came across some uh, pictures of this animal and I immediately wanted to do a drawing of it. But I didn't even remember the, uh, the name of the animal because I remember that I saw, I saw it uh, when I was watching those um, documentaries about African wildlife when I was a lot younger. And then I looked it up and then I uh, went through some reference photos and this was the one that I picked. So here I'm putting in uh, some of the shadows. Uh, there is a nice looking shadow here under the antelope's body. And these strong shadows really um, can help you create a sense of depth in your drawing because uh, it doesn't look uh, like a, 
It doesn't just look like a two-dimensional picture. It doesn't look like the animal is just hanging there in midair or on the flat piece of paper. So the shadows, if you draw them correctly, can really help you make your subject pop out of the paper and look more three-dimensional. But there are a lot of these nice transitions between the areas of lighter and darker value, especially here around the belly. And remember, normally, uh, the light source comes from above because uh, it usually comes from the sun, from the sky. So the light source is usually coming from above and the shadows are usually on the lower part of the body. And um, it's usually coming from more from one side than the other. So I'm shading some of, some of those uh, folds around the rear of the animal. And it's a very muscular looking animal with interesting anatomy. So it's, um, it's very important for me to create a sufficient range of value here and to create enough value contrast so that I can make those parts of the body more three-dimensional so that I can sort of explain the shape and the topography of the body uh, so that it looks like some parts of, uh, of the body are kind of deeper inside the shadow while others are protruding or sticking out and uh, getting more light from the from the light source. So I said about, about the light source, I said the, uh, the, it's usually coming more from one side than the other and in this case uh, naturally it's coming from above but it's also coming more from the right and it's casting more of these shadows to the left. So the, the left side is going to be our left, uh, light side even though um, the, the shadows are more dominant on the lower part of the body because uh, the, the upper part of the body is getting a lot more light from above. And uh, as you can see, now that I've put in some of these darker areas, I'm, um, I'm shading uh, the larger part of the body, especially here around the belly and the, and the back. And uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I also uh, made, um, made sure that my strokes kind of follow the shape of the body. So the, the body was round there and I kind of made my strokes in the direction in which uh, the body is shaped, in, in which the body flows. Uh, so that's another way to suggest shape, to make sure that you produce uh, the appropriate texture by making sure that, your, uh, the, that the direction of your strokes match the shape of the animal. I'm really happy uh, with the shadow that I achieved around the rear legs and uh, the animals behind uh, because that part looks really three-dimensional especially the, the part of the upper the upper part of the thigh which is kind of bulging outward a little bit and getting more light so there are some nice looking shadows there uh, but I also shaded the lower part of the leg and added some shadows even in that lighter white area which I previously covered with a white color pencil and now you can see that I'm going back with a pencil eraser here and there and I'm actually pulling some highlights and removing some of the value so that I can further increase uh, the range of value and uh, make everything look even more three-dimensional I'm adding a little bit more shadow here on top, not because there's a shadow area there, actually I'm adding a little bit more value up there, not because there is shadow, but because um, there is some darker hair there, like some sort of a mane. And uh, I'm also refining some of the shadows here in this transition between the uh, between the belly and the hips, the waist area, if you will. Um, and I'm also using this pencil eraser a little bit, so I'm doing a bit of shading, adding some darker areas, and then I use the pencil eraser to take away a little bit of the value. So 
Uh, basically I use a pencil eraser in a similar manner that I use a white colored pencil. I use the white pencil for the strongest highlights but I use a pencil eraser for some of the uh, some of the more subdued highlights if you will but it's also a useful drawing tool because I use it to draw lighter shapes and areas of uh, lighter value so that I can increase the contrast in my subject and there are also some uh, indications of uh, muscles and some veins here uh, around the around the midsection and around the belly so it's a very a strong muscular looking animal and I really want to make it look as three-dimensional as possible using this uh, limited number of tools. The pencil eraser I'm using here by the way is a Kohinoor eraser and a pencil. Uh, it's basically like a soft eraser in a wood casing that you can sharpen and you can see how I'm taking away a bit of value here and there so that some of those um, some of those lighter areas like for example these veins here uh, look like they're sticking out and, um, like they stand out against the rest of the surface of the skin. Basically it's all about adding uh, more depth and uh, more, more of a, a three-dimensional look to the animal. So I did the, uh, the left side of the body and I'm moving on to the right side. Um, there are some darker areas in the top part of the legs here and then I'm moving on to the lower part of the legs which are a little bit lighter but there's also a little bit of shadow there which, which is why I'm using uh, one of my black uh, pencils to create a little bit of that light shadow on that uh, on that other leg which is behind the front one um, the, let, let me say a few more words about the pencils I'm using. I did a review of these pencils in my Batman drawing. These are essentially black pencils or black colored pencils if you will by Kohinoor and Jaconda and they are decent quality pencils except for that uh, they can be a little bit difficult to sharpen sometimes. They are a little bit prone to breaking and another thing that I found that I don't like about them is the fact that sometimes they can be a little bit scratchy so you have to resharpen them um, but I didn't really experience that too often other than that they're decent quality uh, drawing pencils and you can use them to create some very nice looking black and white drawings but here I decided to use a white color pencil as well because I'm working on toned paper and I thought that these uh, lighter highlights, white highlights, would really stand out and really help me achieve a nice range of value without actually doing, having to do all of that shading on the background and uh, on the entire body of the animal. So uh, using toned paper is, and uh, white pencils uh, is a very nice and quick way to uh, to achieve a great range of value uh, and simplify the shading process a little bit because the tone paper it already gives you the mid-tone and then you have to draw the highlights in the darker areas. Um, so these uh, black art pencils, Jaconda silky black pencils they are called, um, they come in three grades and they are more or less similar the, the number one and number two are softer and darker. The number three is a little bit lighter and a little bit harder. So I normally use the number one for the darkest areas and I use number two for most of the drying process and I use number three for some of the lighter shading and for some of the lighter lines, I guess. In addition to that, of course, I'm using blending tools. I'm using a soft synthetic brush, a flat brush uh, to shade, or rather to um, to spread the pigment around gently, uh, because um, 
these pencils can be blended a little bit not quite as well as you would blend for example charcoal or graphite but they do blend a little bit especially on this paper because this paper is pretty soft it's a soft cotton paper and it does allow you to move some of that pigment around so that's a good thing and that's another reason why I opted for a black colored pencil rather than a charcoal pencil and of course another advantage of a black colored pencil is the fact that they are cleaner to work with and they produce cleaner sharper lines so they are much more convenient for sketching and drawing uh, whereas charcoal of course is a little bit messy but it does cover faster coverage and it, and it does have advantages of its own. These horns are kind of complex with these uh, ring-like shapes, horizontal lines that I had to draw and the spacing between them kind of varies a little bit so I try to stay true to the actual appearance of the animal and because the shape of them is round I had to leave the middle portion a little bit lighter so uh, so that it looks like an actual three-dimensional shape and um, now I'm back to shading the rest of the body and also doing a little bit of cleaning up around the edges of those horns especially because I, I want the edges there to be very very clean. Most of the shading on this lighter part of the body was done with a number three uh, black pencil because that's the lightest one like I said even though I could have done uh, that with uh, with some other pencil but by just using lighter pressure but I just found this one to be a little bit more convenient and of course a tapered stroke is your friend here because um, it just allows you to build up the value uh, very gradually in a very controlled fashion there's another lovely shadow here on the shoulders and on the neck and the shadow is coming from one of the horns from the one on the left and uh, that's another reason why for example when you're trying to choose your reference photos and I usually combine a couple of different reference photos into uh, the drawing to create a drawing that I like but uh, one of the things that you should always look for in reference photos are these nice shadows strong shadows which uh, can really help you create a feeling of depth because when you draw a shadow like that the viewer uh, really gets the sense like those horns are now slightly in front of the neck and the rest of the body uh, but I had to make sure that the, that the edge of the shadow was also pretty clean because the horn is casting a fairly clean shadow onto the, onto the neck and um, I even modify the shape so that it kind of looks like uh, looks like the horn so that it matches the shape of the horn to a certain degree and there's another shadow here coming from the ear so you can see that uh, the light source is coming from above but it's the shadows are leaning ever so slightly to the left because the light the light source is more on the right side than the left side as I've already explained. So now I'm shading this lower portion of the of the head and uh, the the eyes are barely visible because this is a dark area surrounded by dark fur and it's also in the shadow so I'm not gonna really bother to put in too much details in there and the same goes for the nostrils. I'm just happy that uh, they are so dark and that I can create that nice looking contrast. But as you can see, once I fill in this darker area on the top of the nose here and shade the lighter areas just a little bit more, I'm pretty much done uh, with the animal and I'm going to be moving on to the background. So I started uh, talking about how tapered stroke, a tapered stroke is a very useful technique for shading um, 
that it allows you to create these seamless transitions from areas of lighter and darker value in those areas where you need smooth transitions and it also allows you to build up the areas of darker value gradually. So now I'm going to draw the background and like I said this scene takes place on a watering hole uh, the the animal is leaning over to drink some water and its snout is touching the surface of the water and causing a few ripples there and there's also a nice reflection in the water. Uh, the, the ground here under the animal is a muddy ground with some, uh, with some stones and some mud and I'm now sketching some indications of those uh, stones, just a few shapes of those stones and I'm also uh, drawing some indications of those uh, darker areas which will be reflected in the water. I'm going to shade the ground a little bit, adding a bit of value uh, both to the ground and to the water the ground is going to be a little bit darker than the water but the the amount of value in the water is going to be is going to vary because uh, because of the reflected image of the animal standing above the water all of these uh, stones which are sticking out uh, will have to be of a little bit lighter value I'm kind of softening the texture a little bit first with a brush but I'm going to be adding a bit more value and texture on top a little bit later. So now it's time for me to put down some final touches with this white colored pencil because I'm not really going to be using it much once I finish this because uh, now I'm going to put in some lighter areas in the reflection as well. And notice how I'm trying to match the reflection in terms of the placement of those values and the shape but not entirely because the image in the water is slightly distorted because of these small ripples and I'm also dragging my brush here sideways trying to create some indications of ripples but I'm going to be drawing some additional ripples on top of that um, to suggest the gentle movement of the water and uh, What's also going to help me with, the, with that, of course, is the fact that these reflections are slightly discontinued and the, the image feels interrupted by, uh, by these small ripples. So uh, I think I'm already starting to achieve something that kind of looks like the surface of the water. I just have to make sure that I have these gentle transitions and that I don't produce too much texture so that the surface of the water would look kind of smooth and convincing, realistic looking. And the final thing that I have to do is to try to match these areas of darker value because the water is reflecting the image of the animal, so I need to try to position those areas of darker value so that the uh, so that the reflected image looks fairly convincing as well and once I do that I'm pretty much uh, gonna be wrapping things up and I'm just gonna do a little bit more work on the ground on the right so just a bit more work here where the animal snout is touching the water a few ripples there and a bit of a reflection again a distorted reflection with some of these horizontal lines to indicate to indicate uh, the, the gentle movement of the surface of the water and a few finishing touches and a bit of refining with a brush and a tutelion and I'm moving on to the to the ground and I'm pretty much going to wrap things up here. I had to do a bit of blending with a brush. Um, 
so it's going to be like a vignette. I'm not going to draw all of the background. One of the things that I like about vignettes, and I've already talked about that in many of my drawings, especially when I was doing portraits, is how much control you have over the composition. You can simply choose how much of the background you want to include. You can choose which elements you want to include and uh, which of them you want to omit. So it really um, gives you a lot more control over the composition and the overall shape of the image, the, the image that you're trying to draw. I am uh, trying to define these individual stones a little bit better by adding some shadows around them and especially under them so they need to be a little bit lighter than the rest of the background because they are they are objects which are sticking out round or roundish irregular objects which are sticking out getting more light from above and casting a bit of, a bit of shadow under them so in order to make them three-dimensional in, in order to create an illusion like this is a three-dimensional a rough terrain, I have to uh, draw a little bit of shadow and define them a little bit better. And another thing that I'm doing here, obviously, is I'm using a pencil eraser to draw some highlights and de define their upper edges, their lighter edges. But I also am adding some uh, lighter spots here and there just to create a bit more variation in the dirt and mud and maybe create some more suggestions of. Uh, some kind of clumps of uh, dirt and uh, stones and just some areas of lighter value to make the to make the scene scene look a little more interesting to create that illusion of detail so that I can uh, entertain the eye and uh, make the drawing look more complex and more realistic. These are just some of the finishing touches. Um, because these are colored pencils, I sprayed the drawing very lightly with a small amount of fixative. And I put down my signature in the lower right corner. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the drawing process. Don't forget to give me a like and comment. And also don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.